Hey everyone, it's Noah Barnett, the VP of Marketing here at Feather. And today in the studio, as always, I'm joined by New Tay, the curator of Feather's Good Marketing Brief. Hi, New. How are you? Hi, Noah. I'm doing good. How are you? How's your I'm week doing been? awesome. Yeah, it's a sunny, warm week, and it's been just rejuvenating, to say the least. That's lovely to hear. It's quite chilly in <laughs> Philly. Although the sun did come out today, so that's a win. <laughs> ah, you know, you take you take what you can get. It looks sunny. It looks, you know, you, it looks like a beautiful day, even if it is a little exactly. chilly. Exactly. Well, new as always, we come together just to kind of connect on what this week's good marketing brief was all about. So let's get into it. What was the topic for yeah. this week? So I wanted to focus on transactional relationships and experiences. And although nonprofits don't really mean to create these kind of environments for supporters, I think it just happens um, just because we're trying to hit our goals. Things happen. We're pivoting. And so I wanted to share some resources this week on how to kind of transform these relationships and kind of focus on relational marketing. We often talk about this difference between like transactional versus more maybe personal relationships. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But how do you decipher whether you're creating transactional relationships versus maybe personalized relationships? Like how could someone do like a little pulse check and yeah. see if they're more transactional with their donors or yeah. relational? I think that's a great question. I mean, really it boils down to, you know, if you're, tracking your KPIs, and then you're seeing a dip in engagement, um, you're kind of feeling like donors aren't connecting with you like they used to, they aren't, or like supporters like, the, like you used to, they're not kind of participating, they're not donating, they're just not interacting with you. I think it's when it's at that point, it might be a good time for, like you said, a pulse check. Um, and for me, what I re always recommend is, you know, whatever your supporter life cycle is, whatever there's your supporter journey is, go through it. See what kind of communications that you're sending. Um, see what what their your call to action is. If it's always to, you know, to give or to donate and it's constantly an ask, that's when you need to reevaluate the way you're kind of structuring your messaging and your strategy and finding ways to create more of a narrative between organization and supporter and giving them ways to, you know, provide their input on like how you can drop your mission forward, what you need to focus on. Um, but also sharing the, some like real life stories of the beneficiaries who you're working to change the lives of. Yeah, absolutely. I think how I've kind of pulse checked on this too, is if our marketing strategy has started to become one directional, meaning mm -hmm. we send things, we get see if the response happened, and then we send more things, and then we do that. Where it's a very linear, like we do this to see if you do that. And that's yeah. kind of how we start thinking. And it's mm -hmm. very easy to slip into this because yeah. you get busy, goals become a priority. And without really taking that step back and evaluating, you might yeah. not realize that, you know, the last six months, you've actually shifted into this more transactional communications pattern versus what I think a personalized relationship or more of a transformational kind of relationship with your supporters looks like is when it's conversational, you're taking into consideration, like, how have they responded before? What am mm -hmm. I sending that's more relevant now? Where are they at in their life cycle, as you mentioned? And how can I best steward or guide them to deepen their engagement with our organization, connect with others? It mm -hmm. feels more conversational and human yeah, versus absolutely. like, I put in the dollar, can I get the cookies, you know, <laughs> type thing. It's, it's yeah. less vending machine uh, like. Yeah. Yeah. And I think honestly, I mean, community building has been such a big topic. And, you know, finding that sense of community and how that looks and how that feels within your organization is crucial and finding ways to build that out a little bit. So instead of just these one time events that are happening that you're looking for from your donors or supporters, they're returning time and time again because they want to be involved. They want to help. They want they kind of identify as a supporter versus just like a casual, a casual donor. Yeah. 
And each week in the Good Marketing Brief, you always provide supporting resources. So what were some of the mm -hmm. takeaways from this week's resources on how organizations can create intentional supporter experiences? Yeah, we shared a lot this week. Um, but the one that kind of stands out to me is this article from Allison Fine. Um, I don't know if you know her. She's kind of a thought leader in the space. I know she wrote that AI book with uh, Beth Cantor back in the day. Well, not back in the day. It was like a couple years ago. <laughs> um, but she wrote an article on, you know, stop treating donors like ATMs. And while that might be a little harsh, um, the reality is that, you know, some nonprofits are creating this kind of leaky bucket system of like, you know, they have a goal. They need to acquire 100 donors every year. Um, and without thinking of the experience of what, how donors are kind of like interacting with your nonprofit, you're creating this like constant ask, 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 because you're not hitting your goals. And like out of like this desperation, because you just need to acquire more donors, um, you're just like unknowingly or unintentionally just every communication they receive from you is an ask. And, you know, that just requires you just evaluate how you're doing things and think it more like we said, like a more community, more a relationship, personalized experience um, that they should be receiving with your organization. And she shares some recommendations for kind of flows into some other resources that we share this week, which is obviously like, you know, evaluate your life cycle, add more personalization um, into your messaging, make it a two-way conversation and not just like a one-way conversation, but also, you know, not, marketers are busy. They're, they're juggling multiple things at once. So leaning on AI, not as like a replacement for any given role at your organization, but as a supporting character and as a kind of like a conduit to help you scale, um, use less resources and, you know, kind of create more efficiency within your processes. Um, and so, yeah, so she talks about that. I share a lot of, about AI in this issue because there is a lot of opportunity. I think that AI can kind of, uh, fit into nonprofits, but I know there are some, some roadblocks and some hesitations. I know organizations are still a little wary of, you know, the ethics behind AI, the data, data privacy, um, or even they just have no not, not enough knowledge about AI just to make any strategic decisions about it. Um, so yeah, that's all in the brief. There's a lot more juiciness and there's a competitor of ChatGPT that just got rebranded. So I think there's like a lot of good stuff in there this week. Yeah, absolutely. The article that stood out most for me was the one titled Overcoming Donor Hesitancy. Mm -hmm. And we often speak about donor fatigue or uh, you know wearing down your donors or burnout but i appreciated the reframing that it's actually hesitancy to commit mm -hmm. to an organization or to participate versus some sort of kind of like finite state of uh, of desire or participation it's just more of that like hey i'm i'm hesitant to step in and how you overcome hesitancy versus fatigue yeah is mm -hmm. different yeah and the reframing from fatigue to hesitancy also puts more onus back on us as nonprofit leaders and marketers and communicators to do more about it you know when someone's fatigued you just need to let them rest <laughs> when someone is hesitant yeah. there are some practical things that you can do and this article highlighted some of those one being establishing trust when trust might be eroded, not by you and your organization, but just by prior experiences with charities or with organizations yeah. um, or the broader narrative on charities being somewhat of a black hole or really never being able to know. And so a, a counter to that is how do you lean into transparency? How do you lean into presenting your organization's cause from like a human voice versus an institutional one? Yeah. And mm -hmm. just very practical on overcoming hesitancy. And I think that was one of the articles that stood out most this week. Yeah. No, I like that article too. And I think at the end, end of the day, it's how can you make it more human, right? Because we're so used to just communicating with faceless brands and it almost seems very robotic and 
lifeless because you just, you know, have this like constant monotonous kind of conversation. But when you add a human layer into it and make people feel like they're actually interacting with someone who has the same interest um, and who is has the same passions as you, I think that can, can change it a little bit. Yeah, indeed. The other thing that resonated with me, and it's related to a book I'm still reading called uh, Unreasonable Hospitality, was the principles from hospitality that can be embedded into the supporter experience to make it feel less transactional. Mm -hmm. And these, uh, in the book, they talk about um, uh, the last one inch, uh, which is a concept they had at the restaurant he managed, where the chefs would design this intentional, like well-crafted menu. And then everyone would work all day to like prepare all the needed ingredients. And then there would be staff that prepared the dining room and there's reservations that get booked in marketing and all of this different things. And what they found was often, not a lot, but often someone who was taking the food and putting it down in front of the person, the food would like slightly shift or there would be some sort of like rustling of the of the food because you're just trying to be you're in a little bit of a hurry you're breaking this out you're trying to deliver this food and they talked about this as the last inch that even in that last final inch when something moves you you've broken down the experience that was intentionally designed for the supporter or for mm -hmm. for the the, the dinner guest mm -hmm. and the parallel i have in reading this week's brief but also just thinking about how do you overcome hesitancy how do you build a intentional supporter journey is looking for those one inch moments in our own life cycle with a supporter in our own communications. It's not all about just the big campaign communications or the emails or the direct mail package or the event you're going to host. Mm -hmm. Like if someone calls your organization, what is that experience like? When someone gets a receipt for their donation, what is that experience like? Like when mm -hmm. they hit the thank you page after they make a donation, is that a delightful thing? Or is it like, <laughs> thanks for your donation, period? You will get a receipt soon, period. You know, it's like, whoa, I just like, you just convinced me to do something transformational. And then you just drop this like, meh, okay, thanks. You know, type experience or like, thanks, yeah. it doesn't even work. Or you <laughs> never follow up with them <laughs> after they give a donation. Like there's so many little things that make up the entirety of an experience and can help build trust, can help build connection with individuals. But often it's in these micro moments yeah. that matter more than the big ones. Yeah. And so I think a practical thing I would recommend organizations think through are what are those micro moments that we might be neglecting that are causing unnecessary uh, wane on our supporters' experience yeah. that we might be able to fix this week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's something practical here at Feather that we talked about on Monday where we were like, what are the three small things that we could do that would have an outsized impact on our ability to better connect with our audience marketers listening to this 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 um uh, this brief yeah. and one of them was super simple it was just like hey let's show up consistently on linkedin across all of our touch points so when someone interacts with someone on linkedin that is one of our you know key strategists they're hearing the same thing as if when they go to the website yeah and it's like little small things of even just like how do you show up better in market how do you drive consistency yeah you know does that thank you page really reinforce the feeling we want someone to have after mm -hmm. they take this action that we work so diligently to get them to take yeah um, and so i think that's that's what i walked away with is that experience design is actually in the small details not just the big ones yeah and i've kind of been inspired by this uh unreasonable hospitality book yeah. to rethink those micro moments that make a big difference. Oh, absolutely. I think those matter. I think even more so because, you know, it, how are you responding to these micro moments? I think as important as, you know, what you're doing at Feather when someone comments or interacts with you on your social media, especially like brand, they don't expect to get an answer, right? You're just like, okay, well, they're just gonna like ignore it or, you know, just bypass it. Maybe there's no one managing it, but to get like interaction from it is a great community building and relationship building tactic. Absolutely. Well, you include a bunch of other inspiration that I don't want to give away, mm -hmm. but I will leave this one, which was a article you shared at the end of the brief <laughs> where you actually said that brands 
uh, or sorry, the age old assumption that baby boomers and Gen Z are different and what they care about mm -hmm. and how we have to market to them separately or communicate to them separately yeah. may not be true. Yeah. And I feel like that's a good tease to go check out that <laughs> article on generational differences yeah. uh, in marketing expectations or communication expectations, yeah. because how we engage our boomers might be just the same as how we want to think about communicating our values and our purpose to Gen Z and millennials. So it's a great article. Yeah. Definitely check it out in this yeah. week's Good Marketing Absolutely. Brief. Yeah, I think so too. Any final thoughts as people head on uh, with their week from this week's topic? Yeah, I think with the brief, you know, we're always talking about um, the outside of the inspirational ones, but the practical applications of marketing and the trends. And I think there's a lot of things that we're always kind of, we have to keep a pulse on as, as marketers, but, you know, be kind to yourself and just take it one step at a time. We're not asking you to take on all the things and fix all the things, but, uh, but just be mindful about being better and creating better experiences, whether that looks like improving just a thank you page or adopting a new tool. So absolutely. Easy, and it's, it's only one inch at a time. It's only one inch at a time. Exactly. So. One inch at a time. I love it. New grateful for your contribution and <laughs> your curation every single week of the good marketing brief. Again, thank it's you. a invaluable resource. So if you don't currently <laughs> subscribe to the good marketing brief, definitely take a look at the link below. And you'll receive that in your inbox every single Wednesday. If you didn't get to last week's or a prior week, we have a whole index on the website with all the previous issues and they have timeless insights in them as well. So you can go back and look at the archive and be inspired just as much as the new one that drops every week on Wednesdays. New, as always, thank you so much for your work and uh, we'll do it again next week. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Noah.